The Ministry of Home Affairs has launched the Belize Crime Observatory, which is a consolidated database of local information. Chief Executive Officer in the Ministry of Home Affairs, retired Colonel George Lovell, said the observatory will be very useful in data gathering, especially for researchers and students. There were three main objectives. We wanted to be able to inform the public a little bit more in terms of all that is going on and for them to be able to have crime data information really, really available in a one-shop, one-stop area. What we note when we first thought about all this is that there are a wealth of information that is out there, but it is basically um, housed in a number of agencies and ministries. We wanted to be able to capture that in one national um, observ observatory or repository where when researchers, when consultants, when scholars, when students, when anyone wants to be able to get this information, they don't find themselves being frustrated going from one area to the next, spending um, countless hours and being um, pushed around to try and get a little bit of information that can be have with the touch of a button. Colonel Lovell also spoke of the type of information and departments that will be available in the observatory. We are looking at information that we would put out for major crimes, for example. We, we are looking at information that would be at Ministry of um, Human Development um, and Poverty Alleviation with all the programs that they are doing for those at-risk youth, people who may be involved. Um, we are looking at Ministry of Education. They are also doing a number of um, initiatives that speaks to um, information that needs to be have by decision makers and policy makers. We are looking at Restore Belize as, as some examples. So it is information that is out there for people who are at risk and um, those um, crime data for major crimes as the police um, have them. Lovell added that the information will be updated every month. The database cost around half a million dollars to implement and receive donations from various international agencies. 24-year-old Daniel Arzu Jr. is in the intensive care unit at the Carl Huchner Memorial Hospital in Belize City after being shot yesterday evening at around 5 o'clock on Niels Penn Road. He is in a critical condition and has been placed in an induced coma by his attending physicians. Arzu is the son of Superintendent of Police Daniel Arzu Sr., who currently commands the Benke Viejo del Carmen Police Station. Love News spoke with the father on his son's condition and prognosis. Um, I received a call yesterday evening sometime after 5 p.m. and I was told that um, an incident happened and it concerns my son and was advised that he was shot once to the head and was transported to the Carl Huchner Memorial Hospital where he is currently undergoing medical treatment. Well, I'm advised by the doctor that he's in a critical um, condition. They undergo a surgery yesterday evening that met success, but he's still in a critical condition as we speak. He um, received an injury to his head um, that um, exited, that um, bullet exited as well and uh, he's struggling for his life as it is right now um, the doctor are asking us to be hopeful we are hopeful as a family um, I do know that my son is a hard-working young man I do not see him engage in any criminal activities he is a element of the Coast Guard and he is relatively doing okay he's been um, doing courses within the country and outside and his ambition is to grow within the organization. The doctor seemed to be quite careful of his advice and he is indicating to me as well that they are still um, rendering treatment to him and he is not in a position at this point in time. The prognosis will be um, after 48 hours to see his response and then he will be in a better position to advise but as it is right now um, they are monitoring the situation and see how he's progressing. According to Arzu, he's leaving the investigation in the hands of the police officers. He says he has been informed that so far two persons have been detained. 
The crime happened in the jurisdiction of the Eastern Division South, led by Assistant Commissioner of Police Chester Williams. ACP Williams briefed the media on the investigation so far. Police were called to the Penwood area, to an apartment known as Pinky Apartment, where on arrival the police were informed that a male person by the name of Daniel Arzu Jr. had been shot and uh, had already been transported to the KHMH by some individual. Police investigation into that matter so far we have um, detained three persons for questioning. He is a young man as far as we are concerned of impeccable character and uh, that is one of the reasons why it is so difficult at this time for us to be able to establish a motive. So in terms of going into his character there is nothing there that we can see that could direct us to a possible motive as to why this might have occurred. Commander of the Belize Coast Guard Admiral John Borland has been very supportive in the situation and has told the media that the entire BCG team has been rooting for Arzu's full recovery. We will never leave a fallen comrade to fall into the hands of the enemy. So instantly everyone who was on deck reacted and uh, we all converged on the hospital. You know, our immediate concern was, you know, the condition of our, of our sailor and, um, you know, showing our presence, being there for the family, being there for the sailor to make, to ensure that, you know, nothing is left um, to chance, that he gets every bit of support that he can um, to make his recovery process successful. We expect to get engaged in our area of operations, but not engaged or, or shot or taken down in our homes, you know. Um, you know, we think about force protection where it, it lends to our area of operations, our area of responsibility, but it also transcends to our homes, to the societies, to the community in which we live. Um, the young sailor is very res resilient, very strong physically, strong physically fit, and we hope all of those things play to his advantage in him making his recovery. One of my immediate concerns prior to this incident was there are too many Coast Guard people living in Belize City. Now, I must think Belize City is not a good place to live, but um, you saw the, the opening up of that new facility um, last week where we'll be able to house now between 50 and 100 people, you know, to get our people out of the city. The city is very congested and, um, you know, the, the possibilities of, of coming in contact uh, with people who are out uh, to hurt you for whatever reason is, is there, you know. Uh, we can't get everybody out of the city. The city is home to many people. You know, this is our society. This is where we come from, you know, but we do our best to take our people out of the area, um, immediate uh, danger. Arzu's father told Love News that there was a period of consciousness where his son was speaking and did reveal some information, but up to news time, he remained in an induced coma. Love News was reliably informed that prior to Superintendent Arzu finding out that his son's incident, senior members of the Belize Police Department had already begun circulating the news, a situation that Superintendent Arzu says he was very unhappy about as he was yet to be notified.